Okay, hey -o, we are live. This is Omni Dogs. Welcome, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens, to the Custom Bound Edition, where we're going to talk about custom binding your books. And my very special guest today from Near Mint Condition, Omar. Omar, how's it going? Oh, it's going good, man. It's going good. Look, I came prepared. I got my glasses on, my blazer. Cause... Yeah. Oh, we just got done with Easter things, so. Well, I appreciate your interrupting your Easter to do this with me. I genuinely appreciate it. You appreciate interrupting my Easter? Is that what yeah. you said? I, I appreciate your interrupting your Easter. Oh, me interrupting. Yeah. yeah. No. Of course. of course. I mean, priorities, <laughs> man. That's what life's about. How's everybody doing today? Uh, well, we have uh, the ever-present Cycle Cleveland, who I swear I'm going to interview someday soon. And That's Sam it. Klexenberg. I don't think if you interview Cycle Cleveland, I don't think the chat will be as entertaining <laughs> without him in the chat. Yeah, hmm. fucking That's just it. doing live streams every damn day. <laughs> That's about the truth. <laughs> okay, um, so these things usually get going after a little while, so we can talk about. Um, uh, <laughs> Jess, how was the linguine? The linguine with clam sauce was great. Thank you very much. We made it for my daughter's birthday last night. It was a big hit. We had a Welshman over for dinner that's married to my daughter's best friend. He'd never had it before, and he liked it, and he liked root beer, which was amazing. He'd never had it before. So we're happy that we were able to introduce that to him. Are you a fan of root beer floats? Am I? Yeah. You could say that. Okay. I love root beer floats. That's You're... why I'm on this diet, because I had so many root beer floats <laughs> when I started my channel that I put on 20 pounds. <laughs> That's what happens when you get free root beers and they become your sponsors. Right. Well, uh, <laughs> You're, you ever been so drunk that uh, you made a beer float? Have you ever done that? Um, no, I've never made a beer float. What was that like? It was disgusting. <laughs> but I remember reading John Steinbeck's Canary Row, and in it, the main character orders a beer milkshake, and it's pretty awful. Well, they've had like milkshakes, you know, like in uh, like Vegas and places like that, that they have it with like whiskey and bourbon and things like that. But no, a beer float was just one of those ideas. We're like, oh my God, why don't we just use beer instead of root beer? It was, <laughs> you know? Makes sense. Yeah, it was not. We didn't even use the right beer. I think we used a lager. Anyway, custom bound books, man. That's what you want to talk about? Yeah, I understand you have a pretty extensive library. Every time I talk to you, it's like you're in the middle of custom binding a book. Um, I think a lot of people are interested in finding out like what we have. I, I don't have a huge collection. I do have some custom bound books, but um, we can. Um, Talk about our books, talk about the process, talk about where you go to get it done and just kind of show it off and, you know, answer questions like why even have it done? Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, for me, I, I think it started because back in 2003, I started getting really big into uh, trade waiting and collecting and trade paperbacks and hardcover editions. And there were editions that I'm like, where where's this collection? Why why haven't they done this collection? And the more I looked at it, um, I was like, man, this really sucks. I wish they had done this. And then in 2004, I went to a convention where uh, we were waiting in line for J. Michael Straczynski to sign um, some books. So, and I was waiting in line with a buddy of mine. And in front of us was this guy that had um, – well, well, here, I'll show you. He had something like this. Let me take this off. He had this, and I'm like, uh, you know, uh, just the standard book that looks like didn't have a dust jacket, and it had on the side, you know, Amazing Spider-Man, so and so to so and so, and I'm like, hey, what is that? And he showed it to me, right? And he and he's flipping through it, and I'm like, oh my god, you glued your comic books into a book? Why would you do that? And he was like, no, I had it, uh, I had them custom bound. I, I went through the process of binding this these set of comics that have never been collected and putting them in a book. And I'm like, oh, dude, that is genius. 
Um, so fast forward a few years to 2009 when I'm like, you know, I think I'm going to do it. And I went with a series of books that I'm like, there's no way in hell Marvel's ever collecting these in omnibus format. So I went with Excalibur uh, because they're just one of those um, X-Men comics that I really enjoyed. And I was like, okay, well, let's, let's, let's look it up. And I joined the Marvel Masterworks, which is funny because for years I had been talking to K uh, Kurt Kiefer there. Right. Um, he was Nightwing. I think that was his name. And he lived in Louisville, Kentucky, which was like 40 minutes away from me. Like I talked to him for years, and then one day I'm like, "Where?" You? We were talking about something, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm in Louisville." And I'm like, "Holy shit, I live, you know, in Central Kentucky." We and we finally met up, and then that that's also the year that he decided to move, like, to Japan. So, oh. <laughs> so I ended up buying a lot of his books from him because they were some of the ones that I was going to be working on anyway. Oh, you bought books directly from him that he had already done. Yeah, mm -hmm, I do. I, I have some of the Kirk Kiefer collection, along with some of the guys in the group. Uh, but yeah, so Excalibur was my first taste of like doing it everything myself. Like, um, you know, I already had the comics. I just had to map them out the way that I wanted them, and I created a. And I'll show them here off in a minute here. Um, a dust jacket, and you know, kind of design what goes on the back, things like that. They were very simple. These were my first things it was eight years ago. Let's talk about mapping because some people may not know what mapping is. Oh, sure. Um, so mapping is this is this is one of Kirk's books. This is uh, the Titans run by Devin Grayson and Mark Buckingham. Never been collected. I don't think there's even one issue that has ever been collected of this run. So mapping is where you start off, right? Like table of contents. You you don't have to have a table of contents. That's just the plus. But I like to make them, and he does too. Um, telling you what is contained in the book in what in what order. So we can talk about prepping, but yeah, yeah. you know, you want to start with, of course, number one, and then so on and so on. Um, you know, it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. If it you is. Yourself. I'm not going to lie. We can talk about the prepping process here in a second, but it is a ton of work, but I like this kind of stuff. It, the, the very minute details get on my nerves when, <laughs> when I mess up on accident, but you can see there's ads from the comic book. So mapping. Yeah. You would want to like the hard part is if there's a crossover, right? Like team, like let's just use Titans from like, what do you do if there's a crossover with Young Justice, right? Where do you map it? You would have to do a little bit of research or you would have to know in your head. Like for example, um, let me go back to my Excalibur volume one. So this is Excalibur volume one. If you know nothing about Excalibur, this is before the tr uh, the trade paperbacks had been coming out. Oh, I'm sorry, there were some trades of the early Claremont stuff. But I decided to start with the Mojo, um, with the Excalibur special instead of Excalibur number one, right? The sword is drawn. So let me show you that. So I did a dust jacket for mine. See, see I, didn't, I wasn't even that good at like filling <laughs> up the Marvel. And then I did a back cover. And then all I did was just this, like I said, my first work. This just says collecting Excalibur 1 through 30, Excalibur special, and Excalibur Mojo Mayhem. And, you know, being my first work, I. This is, but you know, still proud of it. So I started with the sword is drawn, which is the one shot that kicked off Excalibur. This takes place after the mutant massacre. Um, so you have to do a little bit of research because this is where Excalibur truly begins. And then there's Excalibur one. Ah, right? okay. So if you don't do the research, you would put Excalibur one here at the beginning. And then it's not really where the story begins. Um, but as I was saying, there's crossovers, right? So if there's a crossover, where would you put Mojo? Or I'm sorry, if there's a one shot or an annual, where do you put Mojo Mayhem? Where do you put annual one? So that's the kind of research you need to do. So sometimes, most of the time, they'll say, you know, to be continued in what's it called issue? Amazing Spider-Man 38, whatever. Or check before you come back check out next month's annual number one for the exciting adventures of captain britain if you're lucky they do that but sometimes they don't uh i will recommend crushing crisis yeah to his website as far as mapping 
or they're, you know, Google. Yeah, that's what I did. I Googled, well, I have, what do you I have? for all my stuff, I have uh, a wide variety of stuff, but I can just um, pull up. I had Kirk do. I know what he had done for you because I was at his house when he was working on your Red Lantern books. Oh, is that right? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had him do Flashpoint first because I had all the individual issues of Flashpoint. Um, every single uh, individual issue, and I thought, I you know, I read them, and I thought these. I, I think in the in the Omni group, I saw other people that had um, custom bound books, and I said this would be great to have all these in one thing. And so individually, Kirk helped me design covers, and he of course helped lay it out. And I happen to like having a TOC table of contents. So here's that. But then with the mapping, where is that? Did we? Okay, it's got it on the back. He listed it on the back. All the issues that are in this particular book. This is volume four. But I just Googled Flashpoint reading order and printed it out. And, you know, there's 107 entries or whatever there was. But it gave me the exact reading order. And I just went piling through everything and got it in the exact reading order. And I sent it to him. And um, these books are bitching. I just love all the stuff that he did. He had all kinds of creative suggestions about the front and back covers. And the table of contents cover that he did for Flashpoint. Did he do, like, one of my favorite things that he would do that I haven't, you know, I don't really see a lot of people that do custom bound books do is the putting the spines together to make one solid picture. I yeah. love when he did that. Yeah, That's he something... did that right here. Yeah, which love is that. Really cool <laughs> it looks so I mean, good seriously dc take note <laughs> come on yeah look the logo is the same on all of them <laughs> it's matching spines i mean it's wonderful and you brought up a really good point about the reading order because man if i had the money and the time i would love to tear up some of these books that have come out like uh legit like spider verse for that matter or hell even the war of the king's omnibus things like that i would love to have it in the reading order that i enjoy or the, right. I think that is best suited for those stories. Um, and that's another reason why people do this because they're like, why people, and I've seen a lot of Flashpoints uh, custom bound because Flashpoint is one of those stories that hasn't been properly collected. A lot of them are just, you know, trade paperback. The Flashpoint issues are only five issues and everything else is kind of scattered about. Uh, I've seen a lot of custom binds of Final Night, or I'm sorry, Final Crisis for the same reason. So. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff to show still. <laughs> I have uh, Blackest Night. I got five volumes of that. And Brightest Day, I think I got seven volumes of that. <laughs> because no. I had them all in floppy form. And I was just like, oh, what the hell? Let's just do it. Yeah, I mean, that that's another thing, too. It's like, do you want to do this yourself? Or are you a single issue collector? Because I gave, I gave up. Like, the reason I decided to do this eight years ago was... I'm just I'm done I'm done with singles. I don't right. care. I, I, um, and I'm like I have all I have the entire Excalibur run and all the issues that I need. So I want to go ahead and do that. Excalibur I wouldn't say is my favorite run, but it's just the run that I played. I, I went safe. I'm like there's no way in hell they're ever gonna do an entire Excalibur in omnibus collection. That's why I started there. So the books that I choose to do are not like my favorite books, but are books that are. Oh, there's no way in hell we're ever going to get a proper collection of this. Mm. Now, that's probably not going to hold true though, because eventually they will. Like for that matter, I got. Um, let's see, what do I have? Um, okay, so these are my Teen Titans volumes two and three. Uh, yeah, Jeff Johns Teen Titans volume one, and then I decided to custom bound Omnibus two and three to collect the remaining run. Uh, these are some of the files that I got from Kirk, but I went ahead and did my own. Oh, you did? Like, uh, yeah. Like, 
you know, he had already done these before, but I went with my own mapping and I decided to make like my own table of contents and illustrations. And then at, you know, he did his own thing, but I went with like, I started off with some of the missing stories like Teen Titans year one. Um, his mapping then ha include that. Um, because I really liked Teen Titans year one. I think it was a pretty solid storyline. But yeah, this is one of my favorite maps I've done. Um, and of course, I included the, hold on a second here, where is it? The Rob Liefeld issues by Gail Simone that were never collected in anything. Mm. That's how most people start their custom bound volume two. And you'll see ads, right? So Yeah, if you have the comic books, you're going to see the ads in there. So I do a combination of both trade paperbacks and um, comic books, I mean, as you mm -hmm. can see. And I, by the way, there's several different ways you can get these custom bound. Right. I always do the DFAB, which is the glued binding. Because to me, when you're mixing trade paperbacks in single issues, that seems to be the best way to do it. Because you can do sewn, you can pay a little bit more for that. But yeah, I mean, these turn out good. They, at least to me, there were issues that were left out of the run that have never been collected that I went ahead and added in here. Yeah, and speaking of DFAB, <clears throat> just because it's glued, it does. It's not the same kind of glue that you get when you get a mass-produced omnibus. Correct. These, since these are uh, independently done, this is really nicely glued. There's no knock on defab glue. It's it's a nice way to do your books. Yeah, and because each each one is a different case. Like um, now, I worked with two different guys, and the only place I've ever had my stuff done was uh, Hoochin Library. I I think Tim just left there. That was right. the guy that was doing this stuff before. And he was pretty cool to work with because I would send him a file. Because my problem is I'm a, I like Photoshop. I like making my own covers. I like designing my own backs. These were a bad example because Kirk picked those. Um, but my problem is I needed to be, you know, centered. I'm not that great at centering things and making sure that this is the exact dimensions. This, this image needs to be to fit in the front cover. Just using this as an example. Right, I need the dimensions of this to be perfect. Otherwise, you're going to have some of what happens in actual Marvel Omnis. I see a lot is the overlapping of the spine going into the front cover, mm. or vice versa, some of the front cover going into the spine, and that irritates the piss out of me. I'm not even that OCD <laughs> about these things, but so you got to be really careful with that when you're doing measurements and things like that. Um, you know, I have zero Photoshop skills. Oh, okay. So you you outsource like Kirk and other groups now. Like I believe Kirk is now go coming back into designing stuff. So he he's you know well he local Kentucky boy. So I always recommend going the way of Kirk. He lives in Japan now, so he doesn't prep the books for you anymore. I don't think, but he can design at least the covers for you guys or or the table of contents, which like I said, you could get printed out yourself. You can just go to like. Uh, what the hell is it? Kinko's or whatever. Some of them will give you. Okay. So some of them might give you some problems because you're looking at copyrighted art, right? right, right. I mean, you're, you own the books, but some places like that won't, won't make you a copy of it because it is copyrighted material, but other places will, other places will print you out a cover. Other places will print you out a dust jacket. It's not that, uh, depends on where you go. Right. Well, I outsourced everything um, because uh, I, I, don't, I don't have any design skills. I don't have any Photoshop skills. I have reading skills. That's what I got. And I just well, I know I want my books to look good. Well, um, and it's like I said, it is very time consuming. Yeah. Um, so I'm working currently. I have a small box over here of comic books of Superman, like really shitty post death and return of superman books i've been working on that for two years uh mainly buying the issues because i refuse to pay more than 50 cents per issue for these things there's no way in hell any of these books are worth any money so i find <laughs> i find i finally found my last one that i needed in when i was working in cleveland in january so now comes the process of uh, prepping and prepping takes a lot you you haven't done this but prepping takes a lot of work some people take out the staples i you don't have to do that you don't have to take out the staples. I let the company. I, didn't do that. They, I mean, they have a machine that does that. Um, I take out the back. Here, I'll show you. Oh. For example, you got uh, Superman, right? I take this back out. 
you know, it's just an ad page. Right. And I take out any pages in here that are double sided. But sometimes you have artwork on one page and an ad on the back of it. So you can't take that out. You can only take out the ones that are like double sided. Like that would be great to take out, right? But unfortunately, there's art in front of it. And yeah. there's art in the back. So there will be, you know, ads in here, which I'm okay with. Some some people love ads. Some people love the ad, just reliving those days of like, oh, yeah, I remember when that stuff was coming out when I bought that comic book. I don't have any nostalgia about Superman, those issues, because I had quit co reading comics at the time. I'm just a glutton for punishment and like to customize, <laughs> customize books that I know don't have a damn shot in an omnibus. Here's the Red Lantern book that you were talking about. And this is the image I chose for the cover because I love this image of yeah. Blee's just getting drenched in the red blood of Ilmasat or whatever the Masalt, whatever the planet's name is. And it's a single volume. And uh, I, because I also love Supergirl's Red Lantern, I just loved Red Lantern. I know Peter Milligan's run gets knocked. It's not as good as Charles Sewell's. But I still liked it, and here's the – I use trade paperbacks for this, so there's no ads. And here's the mapping that I used right there. Um, this was an easy one to do because I just thwacked all six or seven, however many there were. And Hold that up again. Which on the, part? On the side, on its side. I want to see how thick it is. That is okay, a thick book. Right here. Yeah. yeah. So normally what they tell you is like, yeah, we don't do more than like 38 issues or so. But I find that trade paperbacks, because they've taken out the ads, are a lot thinner. So they give you a measurement, right? I think it's like, ah, damn, I want to say two and a half inches. Oh, uh, really? Okay. I don't right? think I knew that. That you're not supposed to go over. <laughs> they 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 tell you that. And they'll let you know, like, hey, this is too big. We're going to have to split this. But they will let you know. That's a good thing about Hoochin is that we'll communicate. I don't know who's in charge of the binding, comic binding there anymore, but they will communicate with you and let you know, hey, this is too thick. We can't bind this, you know, or I suggest not binding these. Look at you. You went with a ribbon, too. I got ribbons for all my books. Yeah. <laughs> Matching the the uh, color of the book. So I got red for the red lanterns. Um, I decided. And one thing I like uh, is that I I have a intense dislike of dust jackets. I So I did not get dust jackets done for these. I just had this done, you know, like this, I, I just, dust jackets always get in the way for me. So that's why I have mine done just regularly. I, if you want to get dust jackets designed, that's fine. That's just not my thing. Kind well, of like yeah. manga is not my thing. It's just not my oh, thing. But you just have to throw that in there, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I will say <laughs> that if you're going to go the route of dust jackets, they are on the cheap end, I think $12.50 each. So you got to make sure that's really what you want. I went the dust jacket way because I was trying to reproduce an omnibus, right? My my way. Look, look at these crappy Photoshop skills, man. That's old school. <laughs> like, uh, So I took an image from a comic book and then I threw a real fire in the background. I'm like, oh, look at me. I'm so edgy. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, you, you can design your own. I'm really – actually, I'm kind of proud of this one here. I showed uh, – um, who was it? That? I showed Alan Davis this back picture, and he was like, oh, dude, that's awesome. How did you um, How did you get that? And I'm like, oh, I used Photoshop. You know, but Like I said, this, this, these were my very first ones, so they have a, they have a special place in my heart. Um, but – Dust jackets, man. I, I'm the same way with you. I think any DC book I do is going to have no dust jacket. Uh, Marvel, I'll probably, you know, I'll try to do a dust jacket. I don't know. But I also like the way, the look of those books without the dust jacket. Yeah. Here's a book that I had um, Kirk Design and Houchin uh, bind and that I'm really happy with, and that's the Batwoman omnibus. It's Rucka and Williams run all in one. It's not not the thickest thing, but it is the entire Rucka run uh, that I pieced together. And I can't remember if I... I think this is single issues, so there are probably ads in here. Yeah, there are ads in here because I did single issues. Um, well, some of those weren't collected until just recently. Correct. The early, like, the early part of it it was always the main story that was, and you could see right here. I, I, 
I can't, I don't know if I got it sewn or glued, but whatever, it still looks good. Oh yeah, it, absolutely. It opens up nicely and um, that's, that's what the great part of having it done individually. Yes, is, yes. Um, and I made sure the covers were included, but th that means the back covers were included too. Um, because I just gave them the issues and I said, I don't care, go ahead and just throw everything together. So this is just all the issues thwacked together. I, I will sit there and watch movies ripping these cover or these back covers off and yeah. ads out. So that's, I mean, it, it is time consuming and it's what you want. That, that's a gorgeous book, Jess. Thank you. Uh, I'm very what, proud of it. What, um, and that's a good choice too, Batwoman. Cause at the time we just had that two collection. So I did, um, Batman and the Outsiders, mm. this is, um, the, the Dixon and Peter Tomasi run. Um, this is the complete collection, so it features Outsider, Batman and the Outsiders 1 through 40 and the specials and the DC Last Will and Testament, which had never previously been collected before, but now just recently got announced for, announced for the Final Crisis omnibus, and then that's my table of contents I created. And um, like I said, I like to put art on the back of that. This one is one thing that we I have not mentioned yet is that when you do DFAB, there is just a slight and I'm a, you vaguely noticeable little just gutter loss, like you know, right? It's not not as bad as actually some professional stuff that I've seen, but sometimes just a little bit. I mean, not not terrible. But that's good. This is uh, single issues and trade paperbacks, by the way. But I mean, you couldn't tell. Look at them. just look at that. That looks so even. Yeah. The way they, the way they cut things, they, they it's just amazing. I'm very I I'm very proud of these books. Much like you, you know, of the books that I get done. And when they come home, it's like at Christmas. I'm like, oh my god, they're home because the process takes about two months of you shipping the books to them, them getting it ready, and then. If you want to the okay, so the way that it works, I don't know how you've done this, but the way that I do it is, I send them my books with a rubber band, telling them what kind of binding I want. Since you've never done this process, and marking, you know, I want a DFAB. I want like for some of the books I get black, right? Mm -hmm. I want black. You pay a little extra for that, just like you pay extra for the ribbon, because the standard ones are white, right? Like white is the standard that you get for these. Um, but oh, yeah. I, I mark that. Wait. So you you mail it into them, and I try to do. I think they go like it's like twenty two dollars for one or two books, and twenty bucks for three or something. Okay, and then it's like it where it was. I don't know what it is now. Eighteen dollars if you want to DF baby. If you want to buy like five or more books, so I always try to get at least five. Then they go goes off to them. About a month later, you know. Well, no, I'll get the email saying, "Hey, we got your stuff." But a month later, I get another email. Uh, here's the dimensions, right? It depends on because they do have busy seasons, like the Christmas season or, or summer, when everybody wants to do these. Here's your dimensions. Send me the art files that you want. So I create the art files. You, you know, like I to using Photoshop, I create the art files. What's going to go on the side? What's going to go on the back? What's uh, the table contents? I print myself and I add. By the way, I forgot to mention that that I do this myself. I don't. They used to do it. But now I just go to a printing place and just print this out myself and then put it with my bind, put it with my comics. Man, you go to a lot of work for these things. Yeah, because I'm a cheap ass. I don't want to pay somebody to do this when I can do it myself. <laughs> well, but, you have the skills to do it. I don't. But I don't know about that. But honestly, it is. But I, I'm kind of like you now, man. I'm just, do I really want to sit here and rip all these fucking ads out of these Superman books? See, I, I don't. Just, That's just that makes the project for me anyway. That just makes it too much of too much work in a project. I just Kirk and I, I just send the I just send the books in. They get designed. I have the input on doing the covers, table of contents, the back cover, the spine, and they put it all together for me. I'm just that's just me. I don't want to sit there. I'm too busy bagging and boarding my floppy collection from 1965 still that's a 40 year project that i'm still doing so i i don't have the time to be ripping staples out i get it right I no totally no get so, so the thing is okay um i i'm sorry and just to make uh double 
I, I use Hoochin library. That's who I've always used since uh, like 10 years now. Right. That's who I use too. But there are other places that you can go, you know, to check prices. And like Jess says, this all this is all about time and money. If you want to spend the money, because I, I don't know. I mean, how much I, I told you how much I paid. Like this was 18 bucks for me, but my time of making this it also shipping, like I have to pay for shipping to ship the books over there to get them shipped back. Each book was 18 bucks. But yeah, so how much would you say something like this would cost? Um, I, I, I have never used a third party like uh right. You have um, so how much was a book for you to get? When we started out, um, let's see, with like Batwoman and Flashpoint, like I showed you, it came out to about sixty dollars a book done. So here's House of Mystery that I had him do because I love the House of Mystery run. I had a bunch of trades, um, and I had some single issues, and they were I just I was just I don't think this is ever gonna get um collected, and even if it does. I just want to collect this whole thing myself, and um, and I and I did the back. I he he helped me with the back covers. Here, let me show you what the uh, it lines up really nice for House of Mystery. I would say this set probably cost me about a hundred and it was probably fifty or sixty bucks a book, so probably a hundred and twenty dollars total. Um, this book contains. Um, uh a bunch of really good stuff i just loved all of house of mystery but it also contains since it does have some single issues and trades mixed in it does have ads and stuff um and by the way these things aren't oversized like regular omnibuy these are just i mean the covers are a little bit oversized but compared to a regular omni which i don't have here handy um well here's a Here's a nail biter deluxe edition for size comparison. See how much bigger the nail biter is than this. Yeah, because logically you're not making your comics any bigger. You're just binding them together. So Correct. Like yeah. So these are standard size issues. Uh, they started out about fifty or sixty, but when I got done, um, let's see, House of Mystery two. When I got done. Uh, I had him do Urgh! Green Lantern Corps. I had this these was the, these are beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, I'll show you the spine. These got up there because it was getting expensive. This these were about seventy to seventy five bucks a book for everything. I mean, I did nothing except I did all the mapping, and then I said I want this in the table of contents. This you know this cover this this and this and let me see if i this is a big thing for me to hold up see if i can get the spines to match because this is four really big volumes <laughs> so this is green lantern core and these were about 75 a piece and i had to go because i wanted them to be so complete i mean i had to get um um the ion storyline tales of ion or whatever it was let's see the Green 12 Lantern. issue exactly 12 issue series. Yeah. yeah i had to find that because and i had to and a lot of these trades are out of print um like the first i don't know maybe the first three or four of these are out of print and hard to find and people are so nice in the comic group i i wanted to buy them this was let me think, probably 2016, this is 2018, probably 2016, early, probably spring, I just sent out a call in the omnibus, omnibus group and I said, can anybody give me a lead on some of these hard to find trade paperbacks? Um, Green Lantern Corps Recharge, some of these other ones. Um, here, I can show you what this contains in the first one, but a lot of them, dark side of the green, that kind of thing. Those are out of print and really hard to find. And people were so nice. I got probably four or five people saying, those books are just collecting dust in my basement. I'm happy to send those trades to you. And which was phenomenal. I could, I mean, for free, people were sending me these books. And um, so it's a complete mishmash, my Green Lantern Corps, of singles and trades 
I, of all over the place because I really had to find, I, I had to, to buy, I mean, I had to buy off of eBay. I had to buy singles from, uh, I think I bought singles from eBay. I bought singles from where Westfield comics or something <laughs> I bought. And then I ended up probably from IST. I probably got some trades, but this was the most work I ever did. You see, I got a green ribbon because I wanted a green ribbon. Uh, but this was the most work I had to do collecting so many different varieties of book because um, it, it's never been collected properly. And I, you know, they, uh, I know that there are people that say they've talked to Tomasi before and he says, oh, a Green Lantern Corps collection's coming out and it just hasn't happened yet. So yeah. he told is, me, I mean, that's what nope. DC told him, but it was still like, you know, who knows? Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's just a way of telling him to shut up. I don't That's what he told me. <laughs> well, and also I wanted to read this alongside my Green Lantern Omnis by Jeff Johns that um these go so well with i mean you put the two books together the whole three runs of green lantern by jeff johns and these green lantern core books and it's really tied together nicely they need to be read concurrently sort of so um it's a it was it made for a great reading experience to read all these books alongside uh, green lanterns by jeff johns So they're really one, thick. one thing that also is you can use, as long as they're not oversized hardcovers, you can use the hardcovers too. Let me show you um, what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Like uh, this is uh, like this is a vendor's trade paperback and the Marvel premiere, but they're the exact same size. Like, because the Marvel premiere just looks a little bit bigger, but it's just the hardcover, the actual board itself. The book itself, the pages are the exact same size because it's like stuck somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. like that. So you can use these and these, you know, as long as they're not oversized, you can use them to bind books. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You, sp you, you said you spent $75 a book, right? To buy, get those. For Green Lantern Core, yeah, that's about what it was realistically. Well, what you didn't factor in though is, books that you had to buy to make that happen. You are correct. I did not I, factor so, that in. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I think of that. And yeah. I, that's why I'm like, when Kirk was going to Japan, you know, he hit a bunch of us up. He was like, Hey guys, I'm leaving. Do you guys want any of these books? And he was like, you know, they're going to be a hundred dollars each. Um, because that's how much time and issues are in each book. Mm hmm. So that's another thing you have to think of, like, man, a hundred dollars, that's ridiculous. I can get a real omnibus for, you know, 50, 62, 50, because they're on sale. But it saves you the time of collecting the issues. It saves you the time of putting them together. They're already bound. They're already um, in the way they're, they're done the way that I would have done them. That's why I went ahead and bought his um, Teen Titans and his Man of Steel stuff. The starting with John Byrne all the way to uh, the Death and Return of Superman before mm. And because none of that has been collected properly, ex well, I'm sorry, the nine John Byrne trade paperbacks and now the new Exile omnibus that's coming out. Yeah, and I, just, I'll, and I did the teen, I'm sorry, and then I did the Teen Times because I was like, well, they fucked that up, but they're bringing those back up in the print, like with the corrected reading order. So there's a chance that they keep they would keep going. But I was like, why why would I want to find these issues myself? when I could just get them like that, because that's another thing. If you want to start on these projects to do these things, finding the issues, you know, uh, unless you go to a lot of comic book conventions or you like paying, I think the minimum of a dollar 59 is what my comic shop charges. I, I've gotten them from my comic shop too. Yeah. Which is the cheapest probably. I think you could find on a very, you know, good condition comic. I mean, that's, that adds up before you know it, you're, you're spending at least, you know, especially if it's a new project for you, you know, total probably about 200 bucks on something. But you got to really like it and you got to, you know, really want the book. But if you've got these issues sitting around already, kind of like what I did with my Excalibur, what it cost me was just the time. 
Right. That's the only thing that I had to go hunting for was Green Lantern Corps. That was the one that probably cost me the most. Not only was it expensive putting the books together, but it was um, it cost me money. My comic shop, you're exactly right. That's where I went to uh, get some books too. Um, I, I forgot about them. Um, and so it, it was expensive for me because I had, I mean, I've got four huge books of Green Lantern Corps and I started out with nothing. I mean, I, I put out that call to the omnibus group and I said, can anybody help me out? And I got, you know, five trade paperbacks and then I started researching it and I'm like, holy smoke, I have a lot to get going on because I had to buy all that stuff. Now with um, something like Blackest Night, which I had Kirk do, I can't hold up all five volumes of it. <clears throat> I, actually, I can hold up in two hands. So what is collecting in these that made you want to do Blackest the, Night? Yeah, you just want it you just wanted all your Green Lantern in omnibus format? Yeah, I and I had all of Blackest Night sitting in uh, a long box, every issue already, and I had read it. Um I haven't read it since, but I I did read it read it then. <laughs> um but I I already had all these issues sitting in a long box and i thought just this and flashpoint and brightest day are the ones that i wanted to put together because i had all the runs already so i had already spent the money um but the, as as you say these are single issues so the ads are in there too but yeah i i i do have a thing for green lantern and i do did have a thing for this event um especially because uh, it seemed to change so much of what was going on in the DC universe that, that compared to Marvel, DC doesn't do that many events. Although I've got Flashpoint, Blackest Night, and Brightest Day, and those are all events. But um, I, I just had them sitting in a long box, and I just wanted them consolidated and to get rid of the long box. And they got nicely consolidated into these books that I am showing right now with the nice spine and I picked a black ribbon. Black like my soul and heart. Um, let's see. Ooh, this is a good cover. I like the, I like the front of this cover and black is like, then I love the back cover, the back cover too. So let's see what else was, uh, really cool. And then there was this. I love this cover for Blackest Night. And then I chose this one for Volume Three. So it was always a. It's always a personal thing. You get to choose your image that you want for your uh, uh, your custom bound books. You get to choose your image. So it's going to be something that's really meaningful to you, like this of Blee's because I just love this image. It's so amazing to me. I have the statue and I just, this run is a personal favorite of mine. So um, I have no idea where I was going with that. So I, I'm no. going to stop talking. <laughs> no, you, were, you, were, you were on a good roll, man. I love that. I love the idea of collecting your, um, your books and then manipulating like the art and granted it's somebody else's art, but it's still pretty cool to have like, Hey, I, you know, I bought these and now I got them all collected. I can put them uh, on a shelf where, you know, I've always wanted Artemis on the spine. So we can, uh, we can throw her up there. We can call it whatever the hell, the mighty misadventures of wonder woman volume three. You know, it, it's really fun to do this because and it's addicting too. And that's, that's the problem. I have to take breaks in between these things because I also like to read. Yeah. So if I'm not if I'm not reading, I can, yeah, I can watch a movie and do this or a TV show. But like I said, it is very time consuming to sit there and tear all these ads up. The reason I tear the ads, by the way, is so it can uh, shrink the size of the um, of the book because you're like I said uh, earlier. I think they said it was like 35 issues or something like that that they allow you to have bound or so many like two and a half inches or something like that. 
that they is the suggested binding. But I've never, you know, I've never had a problem. Sometimes my books are, I mean, they get damn thick sometimes. Oh, that is a thick one. Uh, that's the first, you know, that's the first Excalibur. So that's a pretty damn big book. Yeah, but doing doing these things, man. Because I, I was thinking, like, so my another project I'm working on is, is Extreme X Men. But sometimes I'm like, okay, let's just wait. Because I, I wasn't kidding when I was talking to you guys. Uh, I think I brought this up last November on Omni Bros. Like, I was working on the Crossing, like custom binding Avengers: The Crossing, uh, years ago. That was gonna be my next project after these Excalibur books. But then they announced the Omnibus, and I'm like, well. Good thing I waited, cause I and I had all the issues. I just I was I had them on a, I had them ready to get sent out. And maybe that's what I'm doing with my Extreme X Men. I'm, I'm waiting it out. <laughs> maybe I'm like, oh man, maybe they'll announce it by the time these are ready. Uh, Tim Burnham is a chat is saying that Houchin has a 25 issue limit when binding floppies now. <clears throat> what? Well, that's what he's saying. He just sent books in, and he's um, saying there's a 25 issue limit now. That's a that's a pretty thin book now yeah, compared, the, compared to the the behemoth that is Red Lanterns. Right. I got the all these books done at Houchin. Yeah. So like, I think two and a half was the limit. I'll have to double check that then. They must they don't like everybody I've ever worked with at Houchin has left. So I don't know who the new guy is. Maybe he's limited. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe things go up in price. I don't know. Maybe it's a way to get you to bind two books instead of one. Right. I have one last. This is my. This is. I had no idea I was going to get this many books, but I mean, I should have known. It was almost an entire long box of of books when I decided to get this done. This was a ridiculously long um, run, and I'm just trying to pile them up on my table, which is why my laptop's shaking. Um, and it was bright as day that I had done. And since I did it myself, I also included the Superman issues where Lex Luthor wants to get a ring. And this was the first one of brightest day. I think this is volume one. Yeah. Volume one. Um, so these were the events. Um, so I'll just... I shouldn't have brought these up on my table because now that my computer's shaking, but brightest day is another one of those books that I really like the event. Um, and I had a hand in mapping it out. I did all the mapping and I picked white for the, uh, ribbon. Here's what the covers look like. And then, actually, this is a really cool back cover. I should have had this for the front cover on this one. That's a really cool back cover. Um, oh, here's the other back cover on that book. Hey, uh, sorry, Jess. I don't mean to cut you off. but the, No, go the, ahead. The chat's bringing up some things that I didn't Good, know. Go for it. So, apparently, Houchin has also, or Houchin has also sang, sound, um, changed the way that you have to have a minimum of three books now bound. That's new, too. They have a three volume minimum, so I couldn't even get um, uh, a two volume thing done. I'd have to send collect enough to get three volumes sent, and they have a twenty what twenty four twenty five issue minimum. Yeah, but they uh, maximum think, rather twenty five issues or two inches is what they're saying. This is uh, I I don't know, man. That just may have to give them a call. That's weird. That's that's not a lot of issues. Granted, trade paperbacks are thinner, right? Because they don't have any ads and they're printed on that thin paper. Uh, Gabe is in the chat and he brought up something that Kirk and I have talked about. So he's talking about custom binding a Silver Surfer, but he can't do it because he knows that issue 44 is expensive and wouldn't want to ruin it. So I asked Kirk, I was like, what is, because he's been doing this for years, what was the one book, like, what are books that you were like, holy shit, I can't believe these people want me to custom bind these. And one of them had, like, New Mutants 98. Ooh. Like, first appearance of uh, Deadpool. And he was like, are you sure? And the guy was like, Dude. oh, no, Giant Size. Giant Size 1. Giant Size oh. X-Men. Oh, wow. The guy was like, yeah, go for it. Like, they were like, but they're... So he talked the guy out of New Mutants 98, and he got him a reprint, like a second 
printing or whatever. But the giant size guy, he was like, nah, just go ahead and do it. That's like a $900 book, isn't it? That's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's. I mean, that's I don't know the condition of the book. I mean, it's not worth much now, but I don't know what the condition of the book was to begin with. But I was curious about that. Like, what, you know, what people would send out to get custom bound. That is what. Worth yeah. What happens in Silver Surfer 44 that makes it so expensive? Do you know? Do I know? Not off the top of my head. Hmm. Maybe Gabe can tell is us. The, is that the rebirth of Thanos? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't read Silver Surfer 44, obviously, so I can't tell you. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe Gabe is still there. And then these are the rest of my brightest days. And I love this is volume seven. I love with the swamp thing with the white lantern thing just shredded right onto his chest. First Infinity Gauntlet. Okay. Yeah, I imagine that is an expensive book then. Yeah, you wouldn't want to have that done. Um, this is volume six. And we can just, I can show you some art in here. This is when they were drawing the line at $2.99. When now they're drawing the line at $4.99, it seems. But yeah, these were all my single issues. So there's a boatload of ads in here because these were all my single issues. But, I mean, it still came out nice on glossy paper. So did you, like, put in issues, like one-shots, and oh, into that brightest day? What does it collect? What what kind of stuff does it collect? Holy smoke. I mean, it's seven volumes, so... Yeah, I know. And I've got the omnibus, and what was it? Only 24 issues, right? Or something like that? Yeah, I mean, this... I mean, I could read you the contents, but... No, you don't. You don't have to. I just wanted to know what kind of stuff you put in there, like Brightest yeah, State no. issues, like number ones and things like that. I put in. Oh, here's here's my bill that's still in this one. Does it say how much it was? Think I'll be the same height. Property plot. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was your question? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I put in one shots and stuff? Oh, I, what kind of stuff you added in there to make it seven volumes? Um, this has like Justice League of America twenty seven, Justice Society of America, anything that had brightest day on the top of the uh, comic. I collected, so it's everything. It it's every tie in possible for brightest day. Those are those the main events. Red. Red Skies events that I was talking about in Crisis on Infinite Earths. <laughs> right. There's Brightest Day. In this, there's Brightest Day 6 through 8, but then there's Birds of Prey 1 through 5, Justice League Generation Lost 3 through 6, The Flash number 5, and I mapped them all out so that they were in proper reading order. That's why I put uh, Birds of Prey on the front, front because they had the biggest run in this issue. Titans 24 through 25. You know, and then here was the... The real pain was I think I'd finally gotten the whole thing done, and then I'd look on my map, and an issue I actually hadn't collected. I'm like, now i got to find Titans 24 somewhere. And so I, I just had, you know, the box of comics was just sitting there while I was waiting for eBay or my comic shop or wherever, because I wasn't going to go to some comic store and start, I'm just... I, I just don't have that energy, man. I'm too old. I just want to order it and get it here. I just want it done. So I would just order it and have it sent and oh. dollar fifty or whatever. And plus eight dollars so, shipping and handling for yeah, exactly. Idiot's books. <laughs> right. Yeah. But that's. I mean, that's the kind of thing that uh, would drive me crazy at the last minute. I'd say to Kirk, "Okay, everything's ready to ship," and then. <clears throat> No, I have one more volume that I need to send, so hang on. Um, but that's really it for for me, for all my bound volumes. Um, and, and I've actually run out of room uh, for bound volumes. I, I don't have... There's too much other stuff I want to have, and I don't have any more floppies anymore and um, any more floppies from 2008 on i sold off i still have my silver age collection and i'm not having anything done to that um i'm not going to be like that guy with giant size x-men um but i i've sort of lost the bug now it got a little too expensive for me and uh it was just a lot of work it was a passion project for a long time but um 
I, you know, I, I it, it gulped up all my floppies that I wanted it to, to use. And uh, I, I personally am, am done now, but I am in, it's an awful lot of reading that I still have. I've read all the issues already, but I want to reread them again. I think you said it like it, it's definitely a passion the, doing these things. You know, unless you're a completist and you want everything, all your books to fit on your shelves because they do look nicer on a shelf as opposed to sitting there in a long box. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that it, it especially with with you and your design skills and your photoshopping skills and your willingness to, you know, take the staples out and cut the ads out and stuff. I mean, that is a real passion project. I'm not do. taking the staples out. I'll let that oh. machine do it. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I don't take staples out. <laughs> some people do, but no, some people are more OCD than I am. Um, and so um, who, so you design your own books and I think Kirk is um, helping design. He doesn't gather them up and put them together like he did. I think you can send them to Houchin now. I mean, he could, but that's going to cost you an arm and a leg to get him shipped to Japan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I, I guess my advice to people out there who want it done, or what's your advice to people out there? Say they're like me. They just want to gather up everything and send it in and have somebody design it. Um, what's, your, what's your advice to people that are interested in, in, in sending it off that don't want to do it themselves? Um, go the route that Brooks does i think brooks has somebody do it for him i believe it was uh wasn't it david banks from the group he used to have a just a sec yeah david prep work was done by david banks at omaha bound that's the name of that company all the prep work was done by omaha bound binding was done by houchin and art including covers and tocs was done by kirk kiefer Man, and he I mean, outsourced to everybody. <laughs> yeah, and well, he had something insane, like 25 projects come in all at once. And I remember he had been working on it for like over a year. So that's, um, I'm glad I found that on the Omnibus Group. David Banks at Omaha Bound, Binding Done by Houchin, and the art, including covers and TOCs, was done by Kirk Kiefer, who is back again being a member of... Um, back being a member of uh, the Omnibus Group. And I think he's doing design work again from Japan. Obviously, you can't send your books to him. But um, it's uh, that's the information that people are looking for in the United States. If you're not in the United States, I can't help you. I'm not being xenophobic either. I just don't know. <laughs> xenophobic? <laughs> no, I don't think anybody would accuse you of that. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know either because I think the guy, Tim Tim Benson, the guy that left Houchin Library um, Binding, I think him and David Banks were working on something together. So maybe they're at Omaha. I, I really don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe they're both at Omaha Bound or something. Yeah, because since I do my own, I, I've never used anybody other than like, you know, bugging Kirk every once in a while. Hey, what did you use here? You know, like, how do you get this file from here? Something like that, but no, I, so I, I wouldn't know. Okay. Well, I I I gave uh, the information from Brooks what he had done, and so I think that's good information that people uh, can use if they want to get their books bound. Um, just remember what Omar said that you do have to go to the expense of actually collecting the issues. It's easy if you're like me, where I had a long box full of issues. Um, but then it's a it can get expensive if you're also like me and you had to go out and collect a bunch of Green Lantern core stuff that you didn't even have because you wanted to on a whim you decided you wanted Green Lantern bound Green Lantern core bound. So keep in mind that there is that expense plus the expense of having it done, and you have to make a lot of choices on binding and ribbon and this and that. <laughs> I forgot that something very similar to me happened when I did this one, the Teen Titans Volume 3, uh, Omni. I didn't have the second to the last trade paperback. I thought I did. I thought I had all the trades. So when I went back, I'm like, oh, crap, because I'm looking at the issues. Cause I Now, that is something I'm OCD about. I will triple and 
check. Sometimes check five times before I get these things sent in rubber man that they are in the precise order. So the second time around, I'm looking. I'm like, wait a minute. Where's issues? I had all the tray paperbacks lined up. I tore the covers off the tray paperbacks ready to be sent off, and I'm missing issues. I had to order one off of Amazon. I had to wait a week for it to come in, and then I got it sent off. So <laughs> I double-checked. Yeah. Yeah, you do have to do your research, Google your reading order, and make sure you have everything, and find out <clears throat> if it's if it's been collected, if it's easier to get, you know, if you don't have anything, uh, if you don't have the issues, if it's been collected, sometimes it's easier to just grab a trade um, than go out and hunt the single issues, office, obviously. Yeah, sometimes it's cheaper. Yeah. But sometimes it's cheaper to hunt out the trades because sometimes those trade paperbacks go out of print and they go for a pretty penny. Like, you know, some of those Teen Titan trades went went up in price. Mm. Oh, they have? Are they out of print? Yeah, some of them are. Mm. Okay. Uh, Sam asks, are customs a generally better bind quality than official releases from DC and Marvel? Um, oh, sometimes. I think it depends on what book it is, but yeah, I've had some custom bound books look a lot better than the DC or Marvel. Yeah, like I, there's really hardly any gutter loss in this Green Lantern Corps book, and I know I had this defabbed um, because that's what Kirk recommended. Um, some of them I got sewn because there were um, issues with uh, you know art that went over two pages and so i had them sewn but um i don't remember this being a problem here this is a good example right here this is glued and it still looks relatively decent um it's a, a two-page spread um so i i i've been really happy with the binding in all of these books um, oh absolutely and i mean some of these books i've had for a long time and the ones that I bought off Kirk, he's had for you know, at least 10 years, and they hold up amazing. That Wonder Woman run looks really cool. Oh, this is, um funny enough, this is William Messner's, uh, Messner Loeb's run. The oh, guy that I was guy. talking about that had one arm, and then like a couple days later, somebody shared a story that he was homeless. Right. Like, Man, this is the guy that co-created Artemis. How is this guy homeless? Why hasn't there been a prop? Once again, why I do these things, why Kirk did these things, why hasn't there been a proper collection of his Wonder Woman run or his Flash run? You know, other than that one trade paperback that just featured Mike Delgado Jr.'s artwork, that's it. It's just a damn shame. So, anyway. This yeah, is it is heartbreaking. But that's why, uh, that's why this is fun, man. And now that I've talked about it i kind of want to go and watch some shitty television so i can do those uh superman books and start <laughs> mapping those out because i've had them sitting there for two months now <laughs> i think this book actually has a this one has a comic like the first appearance of ornaments that's probably worth about 25 bucks or 30 bucks but see i don't it doesn't really bother me that much because i don't really collect any more singles right yeah i I think that um, some of the Green Lantern Corps books can get pricey, but when people offer to send them to you for free, it's not. I mean, I just got lucky that people just said, I don't know. I think it was maybe even Mike Ashley that just said, "Here, here are my books. I'm I'm not reading them. You can have them." So I, I got fortunate in in that regard because they they were uh, pretty pricey um, out in the real world you know like on uh, amazon and ebay they were kind of pricey you know when you want to buy a 14 dollar book and it's going for 35 40 dollars you want to put five of them together that can get expensive right yeah so that's these are just things to keep in mind before you want to play this game of custom binding it's a lot of fun and addicting though like i i'm, I'm ready to jump on the next project <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take any questions from the chat, or are you so miserable with your allergies you want to go? Um, no, man, I can, I can do a couple questions. It's fine. I took some allergy meds before we started this. Come back to Kentucky, and this is what happens, man. Jeez. I was fine up in Chicago. 
Yeah, I'm going to the allergist on Wednesday to get tested after my miserable last Monday. Uh, you were really bad off. <laughs> yeah, that was I. Yeah, I feel your pain. I know exactly. Uh, I know exactly what you're going through. It's awful. Uh, are there any questions that anybody would like to ask us about? Um, oh, here's a good one. I'm going to my first con where I want to meet some creators, but I'm kind of nervous for what to say. Do you know a good question or topic to say that would be a good thing to say? It's always a good thing to say, I love your work. Um, I am a big fan of breaking the ice with, do you like movies about gladiators? <laughs> Never fails. <laughs> Have you ever been in a men's locker room, Jimmy? <laughs> oh, yeah. And if they kick it off with something else like that, or <laughs> been inside of a Turkish prison, you know. <laughs> you've got a friend for life. Uh, I, I broke the ice with Scott Snyder by saying, I've been reading comics for 50 years, and your Batman is my favorite Batman run by far. And... Phew, we were off to the races talking about everything for the next five to seven minutes. He would shook my hand. He was said it means so much to me. Just say you're a fan of their uh, art, and, and it's you know some people are going to be chatty and some are not, but everybody's going to love it when you say, "Hey, your work means a lot to me. Um, I really enjoy your run. Um, wh what are your thoughts on this? What are you? Where are you taking it next? Is this going to get collected?" Um, you know, things like that. How's your health? Whatever. Um, you know, things like that. It'll just start rolling along once you, um, once you, once you tell them the first thing is, I love your work. <laughs> they, you know, creators love to hear that. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of telling them it's like a specific run. That means a lot to me, whether it's an artist or a writer, like, man, that is, I, I talked to Michael Golden, right? Like, um, I, I've always enjoyed his art. I think he and I and I told him this. I was like, I think you were the first American artist that showed, like, you were influenced by Japanese animation. And he was like, No shit, I think I was too. And we kicked it off like that, man. Like he was such a cool guy. And I'm like, Yeah. And then this guy named Arthur Adams came around and kind of stole your thunder, right? And he was like, Yeah, that guy's a jerk, but you know, they're, really, <laughs> they're really good friends. And my, of course, Michael Golden's the guy that uh, co-created Rogue with Chris Claremont. Um, but you know, once you know little things like that, the, the artist gets comfortable around you. And sometimes, like Jess says, depending on their personality, it's like you've been best friends forever. Like anytime I came back around, like Jess, like through the convention floor, he's like, "Hey, man, what's going on? You having fun?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah really good guy." And, but then sometimes, like uh, Jay Lee, Jay Lee, for example, is very he he's very shy and introverted. But he appreciates, like, man, I loved your stuff since X Factor. And he's like, holy shit, X Factor? Really? Nobody ever says X Factor. So then you start talking about that. Just breaking the eyes is you know, kind of like going on a first date. I can't believe I just compared it to that. <laughs> Rick Easton asked, you guys have your pages trimmed? I had my first binds done, and they trimmed a little more than I expected. That's a good question. What about that? They do trim them to make them look awesome, right? But... No more than, I mean, honestly, the nothing that it's losing much, right? Like, even the splash pages, like, it's not really, here, I'll show you some of the newer ones that I've gotten. Like, you know, just trimmed a little, not very much. Yeah, those look good. But I've never, I've never had an issue with them. I think they've gotten better. Because my Excaliburs were trimmed a little bit, and maybe I noticed on some pages, but like I said, those were ten years ago. These newer volumes have gotten a lot better. I mean, these look like something that DC or Marvel would release, and you know, and when I did it myself, I'm very proud of that. I was like, I was involved in that project, even though I didn't get paid. Matter of fact, I paid somebody to do it. <laughs> But it's it's a lot of fun, and you know what? At conventions, artists and writers love these things. I never thought about taking them to get signed. They love these things. Yeah, I've got some of the Superman in the other room that are signed by like Roger Stern and Dan Jurgens. 
but it's, it's pretty cool when you take them. I can't remember which book I took that they were like, what is this thing? And I was mm. like, oh, let me tell you about custom binding. <laughs> uh, Jesse say what is dark metal getting an omnibus or just card covers this year? Um, I, in when I was talking to Scott Snyder at awesome con, he, talked me out of getting the trades and waiting for the omnibus because it's going to have a ton of extra work by Capullo in the back. And yeah. so it is getting an omnibus. We just don't know when, but that omnibus that the Gabe was the one that told us about it when he had Capullo at torpedo comics. Right. Yeah. He had scotch with Snyder and Capullo and, um, so yeah, they've pretty much confirmed there's going to be an omnibus of metal, and it's going to have everything, all tie-ins, everything, just going to be a herkin book. So, and he said, if I was interested in, in all that material, that I should wait. And That's then, awesome. Then Capullo leaned over and said, "You realize you just cost us money on those trades, pal." <laughs> I like when creators are honest like that, though. Save me a dollar. Regardless, they're still going to get some kind of uh, money for their involvement in those books. It's one thing about DC that they were they they do pay their creators. I think a, just a small amount of change every time they reprint books. Mm. I think uh, with Marvel, I remember talking to Marv Wolfman. Of course, he put, before he passed away, like any time that. Marvel would reprint, you know, Wolverine, or even in the movies, he would get zero money for. Hmm. Like nothing. This is the guy that created Wolverine. He would get zero. Um, but like with DC, I think with uh, what's his name, uh, Lucius uh, Fox. Oh, damn it, I'm forgetting his name. I think it's Lucius Fox, the guy from uh, Batman. Mm -hmm. He would get uh, some kind of money for that every time that they use them in the movies or they reprint a story with him. So I thought oh, that was really cool. cool. That is cool. Okay, well, we've had a good time talking custom binds. I think we learned a lot. We saw a lot. We had a lot of fun. And Omar's going to go watch some crappy TV and <laughs> comic books. Yeah, it sounds like a plan. It sounds like a good Sunday. So, Omar, on the internet, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel called Near Mint Condition. And you can find me on the Facebook group with Jess and the rest of the Omni Bros, which is Omni Bros Live. <laughs> no, the Facebook group. Oh, the Om <laughs> everybody always asks me to say this: the, uh, the Omnibus Collectors Comic Swap and Community Facebook group. Yeah, I got it down. Uh, and you can find me at uh, Omni Dogs Vault, where you are right now. Or on Instagram, my daughter finally said, take it over. I can't do it anymore because she's totally been slacking off. And I'm like, hey, I have stuff that needs to be posted. What's going on here? And she says, I've got a life to live. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's pretty much how the story went. I've so, got a life to live. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, you're the one that wanted me to set it up. So I'm going to start posting my own <laughs> Instagram stuff on Omnidogs underscore vault. Really quick, Jordan asked twice. Uh, let's see. He was asking if anybody had, if we had read DMZ. Uh, I read the first trade paper back, and I didn't dig it. I think you've read the hardcovers. Is that right? Yeah, I've read it all, and I loved it. You loved it. Okay. So did it get better after the first trade? Like I, I thought it got stronger. It. I thought it was an incredibly interesting idea. Um, you know, civil war in the states and what happened in New York and everything, and. Uh, how the guy gets dropped into the war zone to be a reporter and ends up, you know, fighting for the cause or whatever. Uh, I, I, I loved it. Yeah. That's, that's my take on DMZ. I get it that you didn't like it. Cause that's not, it um, wasn't for me. Um, but I didn't know if it got better. Maybe I, and it's not the first hardcover. It's the first trade. Uh, by the way, before we end this episode, I don't know jack shit about, uh, custom bond books. That was all just an April fool's joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I was trying to sneak one in there somewhere, but I forgot because of my allergy meds that I took. Oh, well, you got me. That was a good one. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us.
Okay, everybody, thank you for joining us. You guys are great as usual. Peace and love, peace and love.